Good morning and welcome to our online worship at St Paul's Thamesmead and a special welcome if you are worshipping with us for the first time. Our news this week has been full of messages of hope, the hope we have through the Covid vaccine which is to be rolled out in the weeks and months ahead and praise God that we may very soon be able to return to normal life. The season of Advent that we are in is all about hope. The hope we have in the child born on Christmas Day 2000 years ago. The hope we have that he will return again to remove not just one virus but all the pain and suffering of the world. But with that hope too comes the call to be prepared for that coming. The call we hear from John the Baptist today to repent of our sins in readiness for the coming of Christ. We will be thinking about these themes in my sermon today later in this service. But for now, as we gather in the presence of God, to watch and wait for the coming of his Son, let us begin our service in the normal way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And we begin with our first hymn, Come Thou Long expected Jesus. Thy people free. 
Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry, and we repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 to 11, a book from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The, the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Second Peter 3. 8 to 15a, a reading from the second letter of Peter. But do not ignore one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, 
strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and with regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the old Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he heard locusts and wild, wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray that I may speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This season of Advent, as we know, is the time when we look forward to the coming of the Christ child at Christmas and his coming again at the end of time. And the second of these things is something that we look to, I would say, with a mixture of hope and trepidation, hope and fear. It's something we look forward to with hope because the second coming will be the time when, as Peter says in our second reading today, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, when creation will be restored to how God created it to be, when there will be no more suffering or pain and all will dwell in peace. But that coming is also something we look ahead to with fear, or at least should do, because it's also the time when all shall be judged, when all will be divided, the sheep and the goats, and we will receive our reward or our punishment. Both of these themes are very present in our readings today. The warning bit we find in our Gospel reading, in the words of John the Baptist. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, warning his own people that the day of judgment is very near, that they should repent and change their lives now before it is too late. But of course, he is not just telling it to his own people, he is telling it to us too, to turn our lives around before it is too late. Yes, we may attend church on Sundays, whether online or in the flesh, and call ourselves Christians, but that alone does not give us a free entry pass to heaven. It's not on the basis of how often we cry, Lord, Lord, that we shall be judged, but rather on the basis of the fruit that we bear. But with John, it's not all bleak news. There is a sweeter side to his message. Wild honey, if you like. Even for the unrighteousness, there is hope because through the coming Messiah there will be forgiveness of sins. For those who repent of them, for those who are truly sorry for their sins and pledge to change their lives and turn away from sin. So there is hope for us all, for in truth we are all sinners, myself included, but a humble and contrite heart God will not despise. When John proclaimed his message on the banks of the River Jordan, vast crowds flocked to receive his baptism of repentance, not because the water of the River Jordan magically washed away their sins. It didn't. What washed them clean was what happened before, we are told that they confessed their sins. In other words, they named them and resolved to turn away from them. The water bit was merely symbolic of something that had already happened within them. So perhaps in the run up to Advent, we can do the same. I don't mean that in the way that Catholics do when they make confession to a priest. What I mean is just between us and God, 
to take an honest look at ourselves and to name our sins and to resolve to turn away from them and to turn our lives around. In the words of Peter, we may come to live lives of holiness and godliness. And the message of Isaiah in our first reading is that when we do that, God will welcome us with open arms. The passage we heard was written for the exiles in the wilderness of Babylon, who had repented and turned back to God. That now God had forgiven them and that they would be allowed to return to the land that God had given them, to return to Jerusalem, and all obstacles to that journey would be removed. Every valley would be lifted up, and every mountain or hill would be laid low. But we can also hear Isaiah's message in the context of our own times. For those who turn back to God, those who repent of their sins, nothing shall come between them and God, because God is a merciful and forgiving God. He does not want any of us to perish. He wants all of us to be saved. For as Isaiah tells us, we are his flock and he is our shepherd. I'm sure most of us have felt that these past nine months have felt a little bit like an exile. Exile from friends, exile from family, exile from work and exile from church as we know it. How much have we missed that? So we do rejoice that our exile, like that of the Jews in Babylon, will soon be over. But maybe that exile has gone deeper with you. Maybe your relationship with God has gone stale. Maybe your prayer life has dried up during these months. And maybe you have stopped attending online church or prayer groups or Bible studies. If that is the case with you, then now the season of Advent is the time to reconnect with God, to say to him, God, I am sorry, forgive me, and to rediscover the hope that the season speaks of. That God may sometimes seem distant, but he never stops loving us and will never desert us, his sheep, if we are faithful to him. So then, as we draw near to Christmas, let us make time amid our busyness to heed the words of John the Baptist, to put our lives in order and ourselves in right relationship with God, and to fill our hearts with the hope that Isaiah speaks of, the hope of a God who is merciful, a God who cares for us, a God who on that first Christmas day gave us the greatest gift we could ever hope to receive, his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we gather before you today to ask for mercy and forgiveness. You promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we gather before you and pray in unity and faith. God, our Father, we thank you for your abundant blessings, grace, peace, and protection. Heavenly Father, dwell in us to do your work and follow in your commandments. Give us the willpower to stand the test of COVID-19 pandemic times and that our faith in you will grow abundantly and enable us to spread your gospel. Forgive us our sins and transgressions. Forgiving God, we commend ourselves 
and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful God, we continue to pray for the eradication of this COVID-19 virus from the face of the earth. Lord, we commit all COVID-19 vaccines into your hands for efficacy and healing powers to heal all those affected the world over. Great healer, we fall on our knees to beg that you continue to heal all those who are in quarantine due to the virus all over the world. Those who are sick in hospitals, care homes, personal homes, and any place of care due to the virus or any other illnesses. Lord God, continue to work your miracles so that we all could be free of this virus. Almighty God, comfort their families, friends, neighbors, colleagues to cope with the grief of losing their loved ones during this dreadful time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. King of kings, we continue to pray that you continue to empower all those who are involved in finding a cure for the virus. Our prayers for the scientists, the research doctors, nurses, the volunteers, and the entire research staff who are working tirelessly to find a way of ending this pandemic. We pray for the tenacity and the longevity of the NHS to care for all the sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for a successful outcome of the ongoing Brexit talks between the UK and the EU. We especially commit in your hands countries where there is civil unrest, civil war, terrorist activity, street stabbings, shootings, natural disasters, including flooding and earthquakes. Our special prayers, especially for Ethiopia, Germany, Syria and Turkey. May peace and safety reign among these nations. We also pray for the souls of all the departed to rest in everlasting and perfect peace. Merciful God, protect our youths who are faced with all sorts of challenges these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our queen, and the rest of the royal family. We pray for the good estates of this church, strengthen our bishop, archbishop, and all church leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the next few seconds, I would like everyone to bring their personal prayer requests to the Lord. I'm going to pause for a few seconds so that we all can say our individual prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the word that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song 
for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who sent your son to redeem the world, and we sent him again to be our judge, give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have our notices. This being the first Sunday of the month, we wish a very happy birthday to all our December celebrants, especially Elaine Miller, whose birthday it is today. We are grateful to Sister Rose for baking this virtual birthday cake. As you will know, by now, I'm sure, the services have resumed in church, and we add or will have, depending on when you watch this service, our first one today at 9.30 a.m. It will be the same arrangement as before. So, socially distanced, with face coverings, and no congregational singing. We also ask you to let us know in advance if you are coming. We should soon be able to let you know our program for Christmas services and events. This will be a mixture of online and offline. We will be having our online children's uh, party this coming Saturday by Zoom. All children are welcome to attend and we will post the Zoom link on the news platform. Thank you as always to all who continue to support the church financially. It is hugely appreciated. I will put ways to donate on the screen at the end of the service and we also send them out on the news platform.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we finish with our final song, Lord, I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest without you. I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. When sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you Oh God, how I need you.